me a real uh, mixed bag of this evening. Um, I'm going to read some poems from 2014, which I rediscovered and I felt like they're kind of interesting. This first poem is a like, really silly poem, so just bear that in mind. Um, it's called You Be Pop Song. The comedy silence that comes out after no one says hi. It is a form of cultural failure to have not tried hard enough to like an album which everyone has loved, but got 10 out of 10 from Pitchfork. I mean, really, three ones in my face mask. All the better to ascend to new levels of boyfriendhood with. Wearing opera glasses for the 3D movie, every shiny tent kicks back against the internet's colossal purple drone. There are some mornings in LA, Tokyo, London that are exactly identical, structurally, if otherwise unsimilar in every way. For a bit, it surprises me that the content of your work is so disturbing, and maybe only time will tell, but I suspect that it's like a serial killer's scrapbook. <laughs> Under full communism, it won't matter who your lover is, only that they can hold a sharp instrument with one hand and protect you or your child or your goat's head with the other. Irony Mountains assumes the same one. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> Region, not to transpose self back into a regionally oppositional hormone, but to detach glass jack, held fast rims of a sucking velvet floor, cling to reds painted in metal ring, summer clatter of chorus at daybreak, wind wipe the skies, charm degenerate ruin, maybe, or harness hands secular. Find the ordinary worn up glass, too blasted in temerity, obfuscatory fullness, blind sheen of wax speech, damaging fruit. The evening rent, hearts on a line with stark madness, youth stirs quiver from itself. What iron vapors of wasted years, crying chases in moonbursts, and yet, sallow. A past wrist is cool and green sleeve on my cheek. Okay, one more of these strange colors. This one's called a silent globe aura. The disc of the sun creeps opal. Palpating depths of the moon village where you've lain to slumber. Stitch, ghosting, tremble, lost fingers of trees, sealing havoc shadow, blue bruise of my untwisted, salient adventure, lurches your tongue around the paradise of forever after, throat burnt, the shards cast to windows, fury tip back off a hail blast, musk, fur, pink champagne, phoned in. How can it be that all this goes on in the world if God is good? She says. Unbow turquoise myriad penciling, the silence fly to the ceiling, hook as temperance, desire gets off alone at night with a shoehorn. Languishing in the dank footholds of your disobedience, sly checkered dice rolls to theft always. For communism is at heart the natural spiritual doctrine, arising like weather to spread and part the mysteries of unjust equivalence, all blessings impart discrimination. Secret electric kin. Do not wear it out. Let your fingers unfold over the bedspread. The damaged cormorant of misinformed prophecy. As the sky turns luminous with a thousand greens, mobilized by dark skeletons manifesting as the tide which must be kissed, or danger crosses meaning in the lamplight. Okay, something different. <laughs> Um, I'm going to read a poem that was published uh, on the Chicago Review online um, as part of their Me Too feature. It's called Seafood. 
loving his composite. All black elbows and ghosted mirror spires. A syndicate, a syndicate of aggregated rumor, rue. Hours empty, bereft, watching the fading light reach the wall. Perfect summer and perfect sorrow in one dispatch. Longing and displacement, cotton, taking out the holes of what falls out from dayliness, greasy erasure, calculated to blind all instincts weather. I'll never stop idealizing the prospect of you, so it seems. Can there ever be enough time to forgive you for being someone other than your aura said you were to me? Lasered amethysts, which don't choke, which don't choke on diamonds. Part of getting over my lovers or even failed crushes involves me crushing on people who remind me of them. Painful regret mixed with dangerous sweetness until I release them and the attraction is gone. But there is no one who compares to you who is alike. I see you singular, singularly unfit for me, and singular as in alone. A permanent state you teach me only archetypally. The experienced bachelors of this world who spend three years cultivating a potential fling, then sucking sugar off their fingers, toss it away, knowing that time is of the essence. Spit the hip erasure, nanny boy blue, a toy haunting, self mimicking, self mimicking other, mimicking who. I get more and less afraid. I near it, the delicate centre of myself. Fleshy oyster web, shatterable. If I am made of glass, shattering me, will also cut you. Cut the solemn fist in the dark. Night unaware, yes, nightingales sing long poets to their rest. Meanwhile, I chatter blankly on, shifting my pain around different arenas of my corpo skeletal makeup, with sand bind, not withholding, idealist power to be drained one day. Loving an artist, even a good one, is no substitution for your art or for loving yourself and swallowing fear and asking for what you really want. Wage war against suffocation by false loves, whose stuttering haze is no match for your solid glow. Thank you. Um, Tony, that's my reply to what you said earlier. <laughs> I told him that love was bullshit, and that's the poem that sums up. Um, I think another angry poem. Let's do it. <laughs> um, so a while ago, I, I wrote this poem for Francesca Capone, who sent me this really beautiful reading that I hope you can see. Um, and she was doing a project where she asked poets to respond to the weavings in the form of a poem. And, you know, it's kind of itself a poem as well. So, I wrote this poem um, called From Whose Women's Beauty Springs After Ovid. To continue, to begin again, the waxing of a soft edge or an explicit edge. A fur transparent cotton wolf's tongue with poison ivy dying out fire. The exhaustion of the bright window. Oh my love. I break into the house of appropriation and steal its symphonic furniture for you. For the woden corners of your anarchistic use. Smashed into glass insect. Leaking open the hypnotic floral taste of rubbing pearl. Silver letter sweeping the tide of your look from prey to fatal back to innocent victim. O oh, bright angel, kill the orange navel of your birthmark in the cleaving wood. Shedding terra firma as secondary skins, veto the cosmos joke at dialysis, the artificial laugh track, bees and honey spilling from the moon's lip. Your body will glitter again. Each oscillation of the world's quiet hue from stolen ghosts to Donna Primavera, proxy screams fresh in the painstaking dew, tinging a fertile loop of queenly lamps ear. 
knit to you an ancestry of Spokane, lustrous shimmer, passage from, bro from broken lust to tip of crescent star, uttered in divine love. This spring births an army of virgins who die each vernal rose with rakish blood. Okay, I have like two more poems. I just want to say that, uh, like, congratulations to Ed for this book. I'm really looking forward to reading it. And it's an honor to be up to read it. Thanks, man. Thank you. Okay. So, this poem is called Ancestral Etiquette, and it was written in Western Australia. Get up. Lie down. Listen in to the keen sound of rain falling, river in your hand. Fluted octave wrenching its giddy island to serve. For sale. Be held. In sand dunes, under a whisper of fate, the disintegrated tropics reverberate coolly to a base sound. Ripe heads swing, dowel peaches muck among the lilac intensities of sliced steel. Brimming with carbonic emotion, the rusted engines couldn't be out of you. Curve. In prisons of blank water, denizens murmur thunder against crumbling walls. Decisions are yet to be made. And that hurts. Lines are yet to be seared across the face and cheeks, cast hurtling into predictive jobs. A civilizing, well-used ball. Falling apart. That's what they did. Split anchor and token. Blood frothing and staining wood carried out to tide. In this place. The soft casting of fingers over small, ill-animated droplets, counting hunters by their shadows. Until one day they were none. None but silent whales, a dark magnitude thriving on a southwesterly wind. How did you get here, I wonder, with my knees at your throat? The peculiar rhythm and hum, unobtainable. Speech, something of the voyage. Desert fingers shrugging up in the world spires. Will I take it? Chew your forest gum and lie there like that, all precious and unresistant, fleeting. A sensuous image in time, blared out like a stark sun. A rainbow, a stitch, a plunge, a throw, a stone, a trophy, a murder, a line, a corpus, a whale. Slow egg that won't stop the dam, even a blanket of cold fire. Shoot your lights, try to trace it. An unmapped country, my body. Until the rains came. And then the horizon became a mound of sticks, heat tinder, glue and water. Of what nature is a wound's relation to language? Stay your hand. Spill yourself. Fail to know me. Plunder, yet your hands hold nothing but flakes of gold foil. Impossible to touch. Dark, unsung oyster. Leave my shell to the ones who still bleed. Let them drink this liquid and fill its empty. With petrol. With grass, chalk, emanations, hiss, dreams. Beyond the window, a clamor, fish, sailing on the land. This is my last poem, and I actually uh, recorded this for Ed's show like a year ago. Um, and it's called All I Really Wanted Was a Way to Exist with a Strike Through. The strike is simple. Um, you've been a lovely audience for having me. I'm thanks to the chief and the staff for all this. It's amazing. Fragmentary and economic, subservient, unerotic. There is always the temptation to invoke tornadoes, slick fashions of extremity, trading undivested meaning. Now I'm wondering is that drama a whole? 
or an expanse. Self-flagellating admiration, the cone of your thinking, drawn into a particular greenish light, the angel of your operations, tells me not to wait. In flatly squared prima facie, dividing the fabric tough peach, a moon for your wanderings. Out of the emptiness, revenant place, refuse focus, and tame wild ah la 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 la. We range under that fixed tenacity, a sky at our feet, sighing tremulously of signs and organs, both Christ. Name your value, your ketchup, skin thrift. There is no bed where your body lies. Frothing forth the sadness and insanity of words. And still you, an unhooked deer, quiet in the nightlight. Presence takes your pulse, emits a tetrahedronic era, softly. The fields rotate blade eyes fiercely. Who wouldn't? Slides down the brain. Puffing objecthood and plain spanner. I'm your cindered cloud. The ashes of Europe and all American waterfalls. I breathe wetly and helpless, suffocating, disgusting, worshipping. I'm the legacy you bled for, all you've got. You feed me cotton, receipts, bones, tarmac, and feathers. Why things should be so pointless, difficult, resourceless, you don't know. You've always had a fear of something slipping behind your eyes one day, a ghost white milk cloud of nothing, possessing and pressing all substances out of you. But now the oceans themselves are dry, inside out, a bleach negative of moisture. I pretend I could light a fire. I lick my lips. I am not just a creeping stain. The landscape recognizes me, sheerly blazes a path. Your arms are stretched to double their length over the precipice. I don't need your fingers. I take the form. Breathe solitary air, a blue gold vacuum rumbling before me, tenderness of vacancy. Nothing ends, but milk streams out of you as I rush forward. A new lock and a billion floor. After that, we did not exist. But who's telling this? Sunscreen on wrecked marble, cakes of shopping bags, traffic cones, prams, paving stones. Who's confined a body to a spirit? Thank you.